Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today I'm continuing the study of the book of John. And I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, beginning with John chapter 19, verse 1. Now, if you have not seen the previous studies on John, uh, please go back and watch this from the beginning. The book of John is the single most important book in the entire Bible. All right, now I'm a KJV firstist, so I'm going to read it first in the KJV. Uh, sometimes I find it helpful to look at it in another translation, and the one I, I like is the Amplified, because the Amplified is it's kind of a, a combination between a translation and a commentary, so sometimes I find that to be helpful. So let's begin John chapter 19, verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Well, there's been a lot of movies made over the years about uh, uh, Jesus, his ministry, and his life, death, crucifixion, resurrection. Uh, a recent movie that uh, was extremely graphic was uh, The Passion of Christ. The Passion of Christ is a, uh, is a term that talks about his suffering and his death. Uh, and that movie, though, is when it talks about him being scourged, or when it shows him being scourged, if you can stand it, if you can bear watching it, because it is so graphic and so so cruel and horrible what you, when you see what really happened. Um, you see, it wasn't just being, you know, beaten uh, the, thor the normal thing was um, uh, 40 minus 1 uh, lashes, which is 39. This is what Paul received on three or four occasions, and um, that's the, n the normal amount. Uh, I, I think that um, a lot of people believe that Jesus was, was far more than that, but it was also, uh, it was not just being built with uh, whipped, with the, like a leather straps. There were um, bones and pieces of uh, metal and in, in the cords, broken pieces of bone. And the, the way that Passion of Christ portrayed it was that the whip would be laid across Jesus' back and then the whip didn't just hit him and fall down to the ground, it would, was attached to his back because because of these uh, fragments of bone and and uh, metal it would pierce his skin and be attached to his skin and then the, the man get, performing the scourging would jerk it back and it would tear pieces of flesh off of his back and imagine that happening one time how horrible it would be but if it was done repeatedly over and over 39 times or in the case of Jesus, many, maybe much more than that, the, the, the flesh on, on the back and the ribs. And in the, in the uh, Passion of Christ, they, uh, they uh, change his position so that they beat him on the front and also on his legs. His entire body is just beaten mercilessly and his flesh torn and um, a great loss of blood. And this is why Many people think that, uh, that Jesus' time on the cross was far less than the normal. It was not unusual for be, to people to be on the cross for a full day or more before they, they succumbed to um, the loss of blood or the inability to breathe. Because on the cross, when you're nailed to that cross, you're in this position in order to, to get an, a breath of air, you had to pull yourself up to breathe and could release. And so it was a constant repetition of, of excruciating, 
pain, uh, just to catch a breath. Um, and, and the word excruciate um, and, and crucifixion are from the same root word, excruciating, and crucifixion, the most horrible type of pain that a person could endure. Uh, so what it talks about, he just simply says, then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. It, it, you don't begin to get the picture of what a horrible, torturous ordeal this was just to be scourged. Uh, and that was before the actual crucifixion. Let me read these verses in the uh, Amplified. Verse 19, uh, I'm chapter 19, verse 1, and Amplified says, so then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, flogged, whipped. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and put a purple robe around him. And they kept coming up to him saying mockingly, Hail, King of the Jews. Good health, peace, long life to you, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Now, in the movie Passion of Christ, again, they go into more graphic uh, portrayal of this. And these this crown of thorns, it wasn't just tiny little thorns. Uh, it was thorns that were probably, each thorn was a like a, another nail that was uh, very, very sharp and, and strong. And it was probably, each thorn was an inch or two long. And this was twisted and laid upon his hand and pressed down. And then when they beat him with a, on the head with a staff, pounding these thorns deep into his head, just flashing even into his skull. It, it is uh, every bit of this. When you read the scriptures, you don't begin to see the, the, the depth of torture. Let's go back to the KJV, um, verse 4. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto him, them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. And then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Now, in these few verses, a lot of time has transpired. The scourging uh, was, uh, took a considerable amount of time. But from these verses, you might get the impression that it was just like from one moment to the next. He scourged and then he's back in front of them. But, and when he's presented to the crowd, um, as, it say, as it explains in uh, verse 4 and 5, um, in the movie, you can see a man that is, at this point, even barely able to, to stand, and there's a, a, a total bloody mess from head to toe, to already, even before the crucifixion. I have a playlist, I think it's titled Crucifixion, which goes into great detail explaining uh, exactly, exactly what is entailed in a, in a crucifixion like this. Uh, so if, if you can bear up to it, then uh, you can watch that playlist and get even more details to understand the horrible suffering that our Savior endured in our place. Uh, verse 4 and 5 in the Amplified says, then Pilate came out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him, no crime, no cause for an accusation. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Look, the man. All right, back to the KJV for verse 6. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they crowd out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! 
Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. You see, there it is. That's the bottom line there. That this is the reason, the justification, the, the, the cause that inflamed them and caused a great hatred for, of, of Jesus. And that is his claim to be the Son of God. Uh, over and over again, he made this claim in a variety of ways. And every time, they wanted to stone him or kill him. And, which finally led to this, this trial. And he was found guilty of blasphemy, claiming that he was the Son of God. By claiming he is, God is his own father, they say that that made him, he was claiming to be equal to God. And that is exactly who he is. Uh, God, eternal God Almighty, equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit, uh, who was came down from heaven, man of heaven, and was manifest in the flesh as the Son of God, uh, Jesus Christ, God and man. And this is why they killed him. Um, verse 6 and 7 in the Amplified says, When the chief priests and officers saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him ye yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him, no crime, no cause for an accusation. The Jews answered him, We have a law regarding blasphemy, and according to that law he should die because he made himself out to be the son of God. You see, I have a son. And when my son was born, um, he uh, Im immediately was be became my son because he is the product of my, my wife and myself through procreation and his birth, he became my son. And I'm a human being. My son is a human being. And uh, I'm no more of a human being than my son. He, be, him being a human being, he, he is equally human to me because he's my son. And because Jesus is the son of God, he was equally God, equally God as God the Father. The Jews understood this, and this is what enraged them and made them say, it's blasphemy. We've got to kill him. Verse 8 in the KJV. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Pilate started thinking, well, oh, they're saying he's the son of God. Pilate, you know, he doesn't have this faith. Uh, but it, it does raise questions in his mind. What if? What if this is true? What am I doing? Am I going to be held accountable by God for what I'm doing? In verse 9, And went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate, Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivereth me unto thee hath the greater sin, the Jews. The great sin is from the Jews. The Jews is the one that uh, brought him here and demanding his crucifixion. Let's read those verses in the Amplified. Verse 8. So when Pilate heard this said, he was even more alarmed and afraid. He went into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus did not answer him. 
Now, why would Jesus not answer him? I mean, if Jesus actually wanted to persuade Pilate who he was and convince Pilate to believe in him, then the whole purpose of him becoming uh, a man in order to die would be foiled. He, he knew he, he could not defend himself and, and, and be uh, just like in the garden at Gethsemane when Jesus was praying to the Father. Can we? Can this top cup be taken from me? Can you? Can you release me from this mission? But he knew he couldn't be released because that was the whole purpose of his birth. And he was born to die, born to die in our place, to pay for our sins. So Pilate says, "Where are you from?" But Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, do, "You do not speak to me." Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and I have authority to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no authority over me at all if it had not been given to you from above. But for this reason, the sin and guilt of the one who handed me over to you is greater than, than your own. Verse 12 of the KJV says, And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. And of course, you know, I don't think Pontius Pilate even wanted to be the governor of, of, of uh, Jerusalem. Because it was a political nightmare there, the tension. And if there was any kind of uprising, Caesar could find Pilate guilty of it. What's wrong? You cannot, you cannot govern. Uh, then you're it's your fault. And so there was great fear that Pilate had, and the, the Jewish leaders they knew how to play upon that fear saying, do you want Caesar to hear about this? To hear that you can't control things here in your own province? And so Pilate was more afraid of what could happen to him than from Caesar than what could happen to him from God if it happened to be true that Jesus is the Son of God. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Verse 13, When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. So that would be about noon. And, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Now the Jews the, the Jewish leadership and the Jewish common man, they, they hated Rome, they hated Caesar. It was um, a political uh, relationship that, of necessity because they were under Roman rule, but uh, they, they, they wanted to maintain some kind of power. Uh, uh, but even though they were under the power of Rome, they still wanted to keep their, their power uh, as governing their people. But they uh, they knew that the real power was above them. They were under the foot of the Roman Empire and Caesar. And so they were willing to even say, we have no king but Caesar, even though they didn't love Caesar. They didn't respect him as their king. Verse 16. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. 
All right, that's verse 16. That's a good place for us to stop uh, for today. Uh, now, if you're watching this now and you're not familiar with my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, and if you're if you're not what I would call a Christian, um, then I, yeah, it's important for you to listen carefully now. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to tell you the most important news you'll ever hear in your life. It's called the good news, the gospel. And that is that God loves you. He loves you so much, he was willing to be, come down from heaven and become a man. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he became a man, Jesus said, for the purpose of giving his life as a ransom. A ransom is a payment made to some, someone else free. Jesus came and became a man in order to die on the cross as a payment for our sins to set us free from judgment and condemnation. And that's what he did. He paid for our sins as he suffered and died on the cross. Now, if you believe that there is life after death and that there is a judgment by God and there is heaven and hell. What do you have to do so that you get to go to heaven rather than hell? Most people think that they just have to live a good life. Some people join religions and become religious because they think that by following some set of religious rules that God will be pleased with them and say, you're good enough, you get to go to heaven. But that, that's not uh, Christianity. That's not the Christianity that we learn from the Bible. That's Christianity that is prominent all over the world. But what the Bible tells us is that none of us can ever go before God and plead our case and say, let me into heaven because I'm good enough. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. We, uh, the, the most righteous man that, of all of us would the Bible says his righteousness is like filthy rags in the sight of God. You need to understand that it's, it is a pointless, it is hopeless, it's futile for you to think you can get to heaven through your own efforts, through your own righteousness. You need to instead put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible tells us. The Bible says there's one way for you to receive the gift of eternal life in heaven. One way. And that is faith in Jesus Christ. So don't put your faith in your own ability to earn heaven through your, you know, good merit, your your good works, your uh, by you behaving and performing. No, reject that and instead put your faith in this person, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh as the Son of God who died for our sins. Put your faith in. Who he is and what he's done for you that he paid for your sins and he is the source of life he is the one and only source of life everlasting in heaven put your faith in him now he we're coming to the point of his crucifixion his burial and his resurrection but he after he was buried in that tomb for three days he was raised from the dead bodily and he predicted it over and over again he promised after he would be killed and buried he would come back to, to life as a sign to prove his claims were true. The resurrection is what gives us confidence that Jesus is God, he is Savior, he is the source of life everlasting. So I'm asking you now, if you haven't done it yet, reject all the religions of the world, reject your own ability to satisfy God, reject all that, and instead be a Christian. A Christian is simply a person who is relying completely on Christ for their salvation. A Christian has faith that they are going to heaven simply because of Jesus, because who he is and what he's done for you. Put your faith in him now. And the Bible says that the moment you do put your faith in Jesus, that uh, you can rest assured from that moment on, your, your future in heaven is guaranteed. It's certain. The Bible says 
Salvation, eternal life in heaven, is a free gift that's given to everyone who puts their faith in Jesus. And the Bible says that this gift of eternal life is irreversible and irrevocable, by God or by you. So put your faith in him now, and then you can be certain you're going to go to heaven, not because of any good thing that you've done, but because of the good things Jesus did for you. Put your faith in him now. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.